Hi, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about what the first derivative f prime of x tells you about a function's graph and some vocabulary and a couple of theorems. All right, so the primary thing that you should know from everything that we've done so far is that the first derivative f prime of x is really about slope. So everything that we're going to talk about with respect to the first derivative is really related to the ideas of slope. All right, so there are really kind of three different important things to think about with slope. Uh, first of all, we know that at places where the first derivative is equal to zero or the first derivative does not exist, but where x is in the domain of the function are called critical points of the function or maybe critical values if we're just talking about the x-coordinates. And why those are important is that those are the possible locations of local or absolute extrema. All right, so here we've talked about where the first derivative is zero or where the first derivative does not exist, but x is in the domain. At the right, you'll see that I have a graph of a function. From the graph, it appears that the domain is all real numbers. There don't appear to be any places where this function is undefined. So for this function graph, any place where the derivative is zero or does not exist would be critical points since the domain is everything. And when you look at that graph, you should be able to identify pretty easily three places where the derivative appears to be zero. So places where the slope of the tangent line is zero. And I intentionally chose this graph because there are two places where the slope of the tangent line is zero, where you have a local maximum or a local minimum. But there is also one place where you have the slope of a tangent line being zero that's neither a local maximum nor a local minimum. So it's important to remember that when you find those critical points, there are possible locations of extreme at it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you do have an extremum there. All right, so if the derivative is not zero, but does exist, then there are really only two other possibilities for what's happening with that derivative. So one would be that the derivative is positive, and the other would be when the derivative is negative. Okay, so just thinking about lines, going back to sort of basic algebra and thinking about lines, if you have a slope that is positive, then that means that the graph is going uphill as you look at the graph from left to right. And if you have a slope that is negative, then that means that the graph is going downhill as you look from left to right. And so that's what you should remember from algebra, just from lines. But here we're looking at functions where the slope is going to be different at different places. But if you just visualize those tangent lines to the curve here left of that local minimum, you can see that all of those have negative slopes. So all of those would be places where the derivative is negative. And when we look at a graph like this, we'll look at some definitions in a second here, but when we look at a graph like this, where we see that the function is going downhill, we would say that the function is decreasing. So when you read that graph, you're reading it from left to right, just like you would read a sentence. All right, and then when we go past that local minimum, you'll notice that the slopes of the tangent lines are positive. So if you just think about little tangent lines to that curve, slopes of tangent lines positive and then zero at that critical point that appears to be at the origin and then positive slopes of tangent lines right of that. And so throughout that region, we would say that the derivative is positive or the function is increasing. And then to the right of that local maximum, again, we would see that the derivative appears to be negative, slope of the tangent lines are negative, and the function is decreasing. Okay, so visually I can look at this graph and see where the graph is going uphill and downhill. And again, you're reading that graph from left to right, just like you read a sentence from left to right. And I can visually look at that and see where the derivative is positive and negative. Um, so sometimes we start with a graph and we can visually interpret that, but many times we start with a function equation and we're looking for where the function is increasing or decreasing. And so we're going to use the derivative to help us answer those questions. There is some vocabulary to talk about here. So one thing that I want to point out here is that the definition of a function being increasing does not actually involve the derivative. The definition of what it means for a function to be increasing is really just about points. 
and it says that whenever I've got one x-coordinate that is smaller than another x-coordinate, uh, if the y-coordinate of the first one, f of x1, is less than the y-coordinate of the second one, and that happens for all x's in your interval, then that's what it means for a function to be increasing. So the definition of increasing is really just about y-coordinates getting bigger as the x-coordinate gets bigger. And then similarly for decreasing, the definition there is really just about y-coordinates. In this case, the y-coordinate of the first one would be the bigger one. And, but the definition is not about the derivative, but if I have a function that's differentiable, I can use the derivative to help me answer questions about increasing and decreasing. And then the last one here, we know what a constant function is. Uh, so we could have a function that's constant on a certain interval. And of course, you could have a function that is increasing on some intervals and then constant and then increasing again and then maybe decreasing. So you could have a function that is doing different things on different parts of the graph. All right, so all of these are just talking about function behavior on certain intervals, certain parts of the graph. All right, some vocabulary from before, local extrema, we will be using that a lot here as well. So those are high or low points in a neighborhood or a little region of the graph. Absolute extrema are the high and low points for the whole graph. And we already talked about critical values. Those are places where the derivative is zero or does not exist, but x is in the domain. And those are places where you might expect to have local or absolute extrema. Remember, extrema can also occur at endpoints of an interval if you're looking on a closed and bounded interval where extreme value theorem would apply. Okay, let's look at some theorems about first derivatives and increasing and decreasing. All right, so the first one that's here we actually talked about before, but is relevant for the questions that you're going to be asked on this week's homework. Extrema in the interior of the domain, so not at endpoints, can only occur at values of x where the derivative is zero or does not exist, so at critical points. All right, the new things that we are going to talk about today are these two first derivative tests that are written here. So first derivative test for increasing and decreasing functions. So I actually already talked about this on the previous page, just looking at an example, but this is a theorem that generalizes to all kinds of functions for which the hypotheses are met. So as long as the function is continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, uh, this is that connection about the slopes being positive. So this first part here is about the slopes being positive for all x's in that interval, then the function is increasing. So positive slope means the function is increasing. And then the second statement here says if the derivative, or remembering that the derivative is a slope, or negative, for all x in the interval, then the function is decreasing. You can have a function that is increasing or decreasing, even if the derivative is not defined. But this theorem connects the idea of if you do have a derivative, you can use that to help you infer things about the function being increasing or decreasing. All right, for the next theorem here, uh, this is first derivative test for local extrema. And I have some more things here. I'm going to scroll up so that we can see the conclusions of the theorem here. I have just uh, kind of organized graphically here. All right, so if x equals c is a critical value of the function, so a place where the derivative does not exist or is zero, but in the domain of the function, uh, f has to be continuous around that point, and f has to be differentiable around that point, so on both sides of that point then. All right, so I tend to think about this very graphically. You can certainly state this theorem. Uh, without using graphs here. But what I've got here is a number line with x equals c labeled. And that x equals c would be a critical point of the function. And then what I've labeled here on the number line is that when you are left of x equals c, the first derivative is positive. So that would indicate that the function is increasing. First derivative positive, remember first derivative is slope. Slope positive would mean the function is increasing. 
And then if on the right side of that critical point, the first derivative, again, slope is negative, that would mean the graph is headed down, or we would say that the function is decreasing. And then if you just think about that, if you've got a function that's increasing and then a critical point, and then the function's decreasing on the other side, then at x equals c, you're gonna have a local maximum. And the local maximum value would actually remember be the function output. All right, on this second picture here, uh, the idea is that again at x equals c, where that's a critical point, you've got on the left side, the slopes being negative, slopes negative, and then on the right side, the slopes positive, so the graph is gonna be going uphill. And so if you just visualize that, negative slopes, and then a critical point, and then positive slopes on the other side, you can just visualize that and see that at that point, at x equals c, there's gonna be a local minimum. And then the last part is actually not really a part of the theorem as it's stated in your book, but I'm gonna state it here just so that we're clear about that. So on this one, I've got that x equals c critical point labeled in the middle of two different number lines. And the thing I wanna emphasize here is that the slope or the derivative is the same sign on both sides of that critical point. So on this first one, I've got the derivative being negative. So the function would be going downhill left of that critical point and then a critical point and then the function has negative slopes again. So going downhill again. So we would say the function is decreasing and then the function is decreasing again. Or for the second picture here, the slopes are positive on both sides. So slopes positive, the function is increasing. And then on the other side, slopes are again positive. The function is increasing. So that would be a critical point, but that critical point is neither a maximum or a minimum. So an example of that would be like in the graph that we looked at over here, where we had a critical point where that slope of the tangent line was zero at the origin, but the derivative was positive on both sides. So that's a critical point, but not a local maximum or a minimum. All right, in the next video, we will look at some examples with function equations.